Welcome to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. This show is about Plymouth County real estate. This is a Zoom show uh, taped from my Brockton office with Brockton Cable Access Television. Uh, it is my 115th show, but only my second Zoom show, my first Zoom show with a guest. I have a great guest coming on, Jill Joyce from NeighborWorks. Um, housing Solutions. She's going to talk about uh, the changes in law that allow people that have been affected by the COVID-19 relative to their finances to get an automatic forbearance uh, on paying their mortgage during this time. And she's going to explain that in great detail and they're a great organization to follow up with um, afterwards. Um, we're also going to talk about in the last segment of the show, uh, some of our great Plymouth County and Plymouth Colony history. So let's go right to the numbers. You're gonna see a bar chart of deeds, uh, sales of property. Um, we had a pretty strong month across the board for Plymouth County. There were 706 deeds recorded in April, more than the numbers in March less than last April, but we're up 2% for the first four months in 2020. Um, you're gonna see an image of sales for all 27 communities in Plymouth County. You're gonna see January, February, March and April numbers from Abington to Whitman alphabetically. And that'll give you an, an idea that despite the crisis we're in, real estate is still moving forward. Um, although at a slower pace, our buildings, uh, the three offices of the registry are closed to the public. However, a lot of people are um, filing documents through their attorneys by um, e-files. And there's also a drop-off box at our Brockton and Plymouth offices to record documents. And of course, you can always send a document to be recorded by mail. But the biggest news of the month is the image you're gonna see coming up from mortgages. Um, there were 2,119 mortgages recorded in April, higher than the 2367 in March, 82% higher than last April. And year to date, the first four months of calendar year, um, 2020, uh, up 69%. And some of those mortgages are you people using mortgages to purchase property, but most of them are people that have refinanced their current loans. You should know that interest rates are at the lowest rates they've been in about 30 years. So if you have the ability to refinance, get a lower rate, make a shorter amount of months to pay, you can save yourself a lot of money. So I strongly advise you to act on that. Um, as I mentioned, mortgage rates are hitting record low, lowest rate in the 49 year history of tracking of mortgage rates. Next image you're gonna see is of foreclosure deeds. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about that in the next segment, but foreclosure deeds are going down because there's a foreclosure moratorium. And although some were recorded early in the month of April, uh, the numbers are very low. Um, there were only 18, 20, I'm sorry, 28 foreclosure deeds in April. Um, and they are 1% higher than last year at this time. The biggest change you're gonna see is a bar chart of foreclosure notices. Uh, there were only two foreclosure notices recorded for the month of April. And you can see by that bar chart, the significant, significant drop off. You're gonna see an image of foreclosure deeds and orders of notice for all 27 communities in Plymouth County, again from Abington to Whitman. And uh, while Brockton and Plymouth traditionally have been the ones with the most difficulty, you can see the numbers that were recorded last month 
and they're almost non-existent because of the moratorium on foreclosure documents. Uh, so anyways, we've been recording documents both in recorded land. We've hit the highest numbers we have ever seen in recording um, documents over the internet because we're closed to the public. Our training room uh, opportunities are, are on hold right now until we open up again. Um, beware of scams that are out there during these times. There are many unscrupulous people that will always try to take advantage of people during these difficult times. And uh, be very careful what you agree to do to, with your, for most people, what for most people is their most valuable asset, their home. Um, we're putting more and more records up online. So hoping that is gonna be helpful to people doing research from home instead of at the registry. And in my next segment, segment two, Jill Joyce with NeighborWorks Housing Solution is gonna be explaining how the foreclosure moratorium works. And if you're someone who's facing difficulty in paying your mortgage because of COVID-19, um, loss of job, uh, losing some of your work time and your income has dropped because of that, there is a way that you can put your mortgage payments on the back end of your mortgage payments and help you maintain your property. But it does take an overt act of someone to um, make sure that those that goes into place. So please um, follow the advice coming up from Jill Joyce. And we'll see you in the next segment. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. This segment of the show is always done something educational. We've had uh, title examiners, uh, recorders, uh, real estate people, uh, surveyors, appraisers, uh, a lot of people involved in the real estate business. Over the years, we've had uh, numerous people from NeighborWorks um, on the show. I think my first guest on the show was Brian Moriarty, Joe, from NeighborWorks, who's retired yes. since. But I have a great guest today. Um, I have Jill Joyce, who's with NeighborWorks of... Housing Solutions. What's name now? NeighborWorks Housing Solutions. NeighborWorks Housing Solutions. I always get that. I still go back to Southeastern Mass. So Jill, um, why don't you introduce yourself to our viewers and tell them a little bit how you get involved in this line of work? Absolutely, John. Uh, thank you so much for uh, inviting me to uh, speak today. Um, so actually, it's, I kind of came about uh, this work uh, in a in a way that I think a lot of housing counselors, I'm not the only one. Um, I was actually a real estate attorney for 17 years practicing in Massachusetts um, and made a career change um, in 2009. Um, as you know, the real estate business kind of dried up. Yeah, the um, crisis of 2008, yeah, we call it. Exactly. And yeah. that has an impact on folks. Um, but I was looking to make a change uh, anyway and wanted to see if I could use some of the knowledge I'd leaned over the years um, to, to actually help folks, um, especially people impacted um, by foreclosure, um, because I I'd actually had a lot of you know, uh, experience in not so much to representing buyers, but representing um, condo developers and folks like that. But uh, I wanted to kind of go to uh, a position where I could use some of that expertise to help people. So in 2009, I actually joined uh, Quincy Community Action Programs in Quincy and did foreclosure prevention work there and first time homebuyer classes there and reverse mortgage counseling there. I was there, I, I believe, I joined NeighborWorks in 2016. So I was in, at, at uh, QCAP for about seven years and then uh, joined the team at NeighborWorks uh, in March of 2016. And I've been doing the same work uh, there. I do uh, foreclosure prevention, uh, first time homebuyer classes. We do financial coaching. Um, and I also do uh, reverse mortgage counseling, which is required uh, any, any person, any senior getting a reverse mortgage in our state um, is required to have counseling uh, prior to entering into one of those mortgages. 
and I do that counseling as well. Um, so I wear a few hats. I enjoy it very much. So I've been in, uh, doing this job as register for a, a pretty long period of time. I was registered during the housing boom of 2003, four and five, and was registered during the crisis up to, leading up to 2008. And I can tell you that Naval Works at the time was incredibly helpful in helping people through the last crisis, um, really more of a housing crisis at the time, uh, where a lot of people had been getting um, mortgages um, that reset and people were losing their homes on a regular basis and Neighbor Works was an organization that stepped up and really helped thousands of people uh, save their homes at the time with modifications and other programs. So um, here we are again, it's a different kind of crisis right. um, that we're facing, but I know Neighbor Works is stepping up again um, uh, in, a, in a different way, uh, but I know you're helping people through um, some of the ways um, they can defer um, mortgage payments because of loss of jobs and income. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure, absolutely. Um, so uh, the federal government uh, stepped in in March uh, with the CARE Act, uh, which provided some relief for homeowners who had federally backed mortgages, which is FHA, VA, Freddie and Fannie. That doesn't cover all mortgages, as you know, John. Um, and they had a similar type of, uh, they had a, uh, the CARE Act provides for a moratorium on foreclosures and provides for an automatic forbearance. Um, but what I'll discuss today is sort of the Commonwealth's layer on top of that, which is uh, even more important because on April 20th, uh, Governor Baker signed uh, the uh, Chapter 65 of the Act 2020, which uh, provides for a moratorium on foreclosures and evictions during the COVID-19 crisis. But more importantly, for mortgage for folks with mortgages on their property, uh, if they have been affected by COVID-19, they can automatically basically they contact their loan servicer and say, I have been affected and they are automatically given a forbearance on the payments on that mortgage. Um, so again, but, but the more important part of this, and you, I'm, you're probably aware for that's up to 180 days is the, the period. Um, but the more important part of this, John, and you probably realize that with a forbearance, all that means is that they're suspending payments for a period of time, but of course, at the end of forbearance, that's when things can get difficult if a, if a servicer requires you to pay everything back, because that would be kind of crazy that somebody would have to come up with, you know, six months of payments. So the act also provides for the lender, the ser these loan servicers, lenders, banks, whatever you, name you want to use for them, are required to then put the amount, the amount that was part of the forbearance, those months that were not paid, they're required to put that at the end of the loan. So if you had a 30 year loan and maybe you got it out two years ago, um, it would be placed at the end of that loan. So when you sold the house, uh, that amount would be due. Um, if you refinanced later on down the road, it would come due, um, but it will protect people so that it's something that, that will, it's, well, it's going to save a, a lot of folks, a lot of, uh, 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 anguish because I just couldn't imagine how it would work if the forbearance period just ended and then the mortgage payment came due, right? That that wouldn't solve too many problems. So um, the act really went, took two steps, not just requiring the forbearance on the part of the mortgages, mortgage companies, but also requiring that that amount due, that, that accumulated amount past due, whatever you want to call it, would then have to go at the end of the loan. So it's a little bit of a different... Um... Uh, type, type of crisis than 2008. In 2008, um, there were a lot of people trying to get uh, in touch with their lender. Um, and in many cases, we had housing sessions like at Crystal, the old Crystals, which is now closed in uh, the Arnone School, 
where we had three or 400 people in line to speak to housing modification specialists from, from the banks. Um, this is more of a quieter one, just like the disease is. It, it's happening within people's households right. that they're realizing they're not um, able to make the payments. How are people ge getting reached? Because I did read an article that there are so many people that don't even know this is an option to them. Um, that's a good question. I, I would have to say, I don't know that it's incumbent upon the law doesn't require, like for instance, in the case of the foreclosure crisis, I think there was some efforts made by the federal government to force banks to sort of reach out to folks and they had a, they had to contact them and, yes, yes. um, you know, with this, I know I've, I've, I've been on several different web pages for for the major mortgage servicers, my own Wells Fargo, for instance, uh, Shell Point. I was just looking at that for a client uh, just a little bit ago. Most of them have right at the banner at the top of their websites. If you need assistance with if you've been affected by COVID-19 and then it proceeds to give you information. Most of those national mortgage servicers, however, aren't going to have the updated, you know, Massachusetts special law, you know, I mean, so I, you, you're going to have to, well, we'll get to that in a second, but I, are they doing active reach outreach saying we're going to send out mailers to people and, you know, you can get a forbearance on your mortgage. I don't know that that's actually occurring. And that's, a, so I'm glad we're doing this today because people will then hopefully be able to, um, realize that they can get some help, or maybe if they know a family member or a friend who's been laid off due to this, they can let them know. But I don't know that the, the servicers or, or the state, um, I mean, the governor, I mean, it was a big deal when this when it was signed, and I know some people watch the news all the time, and some sure. people never watch the news. So. We've had this partnership with NeighborWorks um, during and since that crisis, whereby we provided NeighborWorks with a listing of everyone that is at a foreclosure notice, notice stage, so they could be notified uh, by a mailer uh, to contact NeighborWorks to help them. Right. Since there are no foreclosure notices going out, I'm just very concerned about um, when people are panicking, looking over their bills and knowing they can't make that payment, um, how they would know to overtly um, notify the lender that they want to take advantage of the program? That's a great question. Um, we, uh, obviously we are still fielding many calls. Sure. Uh, you know, we're, we're up and running full staff, full speed. Uh, we're all working from home, but it's worked out very well. We've, we, we've been able to adapt. Um, and so the counselors are you are right here for, to help. It's just, it's, we're not in our physical space anymore. Right. Which I know can be a problem for some folks. Um, they just, you know, they're not in, they don't do a lot of internet and, and such. Um, but I, you know, I, I know, I believe, you know, I don't know if the registries might want to start also um, updating their websites. Um, I know that the States has a, has a lot of information, the division of banks on their website. It's right across the top, you know, all yeah, that'd be a good idea. Sure. Yeah. I, but but again, websites aren't perfect because not everybody accesses those, right? right? And they wouldn't think to go, right? To, right. To um, now, do I? I don't know. I have, you know, I'll look at my. Uh, I'm going to look at my mortgage statement <laughs> now that I think sure. about it and see if sure. our mortgage statement actually said, you know, if you're suffering um, from, you know, if you've been affected by COVID-19. Well, well, clearly, I'm going to follow up with people, and I think it's something that we need to. Um, beyond things, opportunities like this to try to promote um, that. It would take a lot of anxiety away from people, obviously, if they know uh, they can do it and how easy it is to do it and, and that it's an option. So you want to walk through the process of what someone has to do to um, put that into place? Absolutely. Um, it's it's the great thing about it is it's very simple. Um, it's a lot less complicated than what used to happen with the loan modification packages and, and anybody who's listening, who's been through any of that process knows how, how cumbersome and difficult it was. 
This is simply a phone call. Um, you must reach out to your servicer. You can call them. Um, you can log on to your account. If you don't have, a, if you, the, the best way to keep in contact with your servicer is set up your account right on their website. If you have an account number with them, you should be able to have an online and you can see your statement. I was looking at mine today. Um, if you have that, you can go on and ask for help right there. Um, they have email addresses you can also reach out to. I know the phones are a little crazy at the servicers, the loan sure, servicers right imagine. now. Um, I, honestly, if, if you can avoid the phone and can instead go log on, um, they probably also have fax numbers available. Uh, I would, I, you know, I, I think the online account is probably the, the, the best way to do it. If you can't do that, Get, certainly get on the phone with them. They do have those phone numbers. It's just you might be waiting a bit. Um, and then you notify them, I have been affected by COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, that's it. They are not requiring documentation of what has happened. Did you lose a job if, God forbid, you, you're sick or someone in your family? Right. Right. They, they aren't requiring that. The, the, the act does not require that. Well, that's um, just, much better than the modifications during the last, the last time. Oh yeah, you said it. <laughs> mm. um, so you just let them know that, and then it, it, otherwise it's not automatic. I mean, some people think, oh well, they're going right. to just do it, you know, because right. they're doing it for everybody. They're not doing it for everybody. They're doing it for a lot of people. I was reading that it, like four million. There've been four million forbearances thus right. far, um, granted or done. I I, granted is not the right word because the servicer must do it. It is not a choice on their part. Um, the, our state requires them to do it. Um, so, and some of them may not be aware of that. Some of them might think they're under the CARE Act or they might say, oh, well, we'll forbear it for 90 days or we'll do this. No, they must follow our state's rules. Uh, uh, so your, so your, your advice is be vigilant, do it right away when you're in trouble and, yes. um, and, and it's an automatic granting. It is, it is, but don't sit on that either. If, if I mean, it is really difficult to be on the phone waiting and waiting. Um, if right. that's the only way you can do it, then that's fine. Just make sure you do it. I personally, if I were advising clients, I would say get the name and the customer service number of the person. Usually they have a require, you know, when, they, when, when they're speaking to anyone from Massachusetts, they must usually give out an ID number, an employee ID number that says, I spoke with Mary number 555 at Wells Fargo today, you know, April 12th, excuse me, May 12th, and keep that record. Um, and then make sure that it, it reflects on your account next month, okay? And if, and if you have problems with these, with these folks, if they're playing some kind of funny little games, which they do sometimes, I hate to say it, um, call us, Call us at NeighborWorks, and um, and we'll get a housing counselor to try to help. Um, we we do we we certainly have expertise in the area, and hopefully we do have a few contacts at some of the servicers now, which we didn't have prior to this emergency. But there, the servicers have put together, thank goodness, another list of people that we sometimes numbers we can call. So. But if, if that happens, your first step, though, is to call your servicer. And it shouldn't be a big, difficult thing to do. It should be very easy. No, I appreciate you sharing this information. I do think there are many, many people that um, aren't aware of the opportunity to do so um, so easily. And I will follow up with you to get some kind of written um, guidance to put up on our website and do our little bit and I'll follow it up with a couple of people I know that have uh, similar opportunities to share that with people. Okay. So thank you for coming on the show, Joe. Thank you, John. Welcome back to the Register Report. Again, my name is John Buckley, Register of Deeds for Plymouth County. I want to thank Jill Joyce for the great presentation she did on the mortgage moratorium, the foreclosure moratorium. Um, if you're in that situation that she described, please take action. Don't hesitate. Again, it takes an overt act of you to get into that status of the moratorium and putting the payments on the back end of your mortgage. Uh, the month of May, um, we always talk about a history for the month um, at the end of the show. Cinco de Mayo was on the 5th, National Nurses Day. Of course, 
you know, the heroes of, of our time on the 6th, uh, Mother's Day on the 10th, National Chocolate Chip Day the 15th, Armed Forces Day on the 16th, uh, a great Plymouth County holiday that I'll describe, Joshua Day, James Day on the 23rd, and Memorial Day, which will be celebrated this year in a lot different way because of the social distancing requirement. First image you're gonna see is a story about Joshua James. Joshua James was America's most celebrated lifesaver. You know, during uh, an earlier time uh, off the coast of Massachusetts, ships would hit uh, rocks because the navigation systems weren't quite as good as now and many people would sink in that ship. There were life-saving stations set up along the coast of Massachusetts and all up and down the East and West Coast. And Mr. James, who lived in Hull, is credited with saving hundreds of lives from damaged ships off the coast of Nantasket and Point Allerton in Hull. Um, when, when the U.S. Life-Saving Service established the station, he was named as a keeper of that station. Um, in 1902, uh, in response to a tragic loss of six life savers, uh, he called for a special training exercise and he lost his life uh, training them to help out in saving other people's lives. Um, at the conclusion of the exercise, he had a heart attack and died and he was buried in Hull in a lifeboat for a casket. Um, his station is now a great museum, the Hull Life Saving Museum. If you've never been there, it's a great a little museum to go visit when it's open again. It's listed on the National Register of Historical Places. And his achievements uh, are continued to be honored today. Commonwealth of Massachusetts established the third Sunday in May as Joshua James Day. And his home is marked by a plaque. In addition, the United States Coast Guard grants a medal in his name annually to guardsmen with long and dedicated service. The next image you're gonna see related to Memorial Day is Island Grove Park. It's a site of pre-Civil War abolitionist meeting, but also a monument to those who lost their lives in war, which is what the celebration of Memorial Day is. Uh, there's a wonderful bridge leading you over to Island Grove Park. Um, it was built in the 1912 uh, celebration of Abington's Bicentennial Celebration. And the Abington Sons of Union Veterans built Memorial Arch and Bridge in memory for the service and sacrifices for Civil War soldiers and sailors from Abington. Um, take a walk around there. There's also a memorial for the abolitionist meetings they held there. And another building in Abington, the Memorial Building, which also celebrates all those lives lost uh, during the wars, which again, we're celebrating in a different way this year. Less parades, less services, but certainly we want to recognize the contributions of those that fought in the wars and above all else for Memorial Day, those people that passed away. Um, so I wanna thank um, Mike Simmons from Brockton Cable Access for helping me put this show together. Um, we had some great assistance today from Athena Grant in taping this show. Lona Green Baker and Christine Richards from my office. Again, this is a show we do every month that talks about for what is most people their most valuable asset. And certainly during these very, very difficult times of the virus in, in impacting so many lives, including lives lost, be very careful out there. Use this information to help you navigate uh, what is before us, particularly if you're having some difficulty. Um, but be safe, be healthy, and despite the times, have a happy Memorial Day.
Thank you. We'll see you next month.